coming up on Sports Night. The Cats take on Illinois in Urbana. The Wildcats welcome the Blue Demons to Welsh Ryan. And Northwestern plays in the Fort Myers tip-off. The holidays are just around the corner, but Sports Night is, is right, right now. now. Welcome back to Sports Night. I'm Matthew Coronado alongside Davis Johnson, and we have made taken a break for Thanksgiving, but Northwestern sports did not. With that being said, how was your Thanksgiving, Davis? Uh, it was pretty good, Matthew. Being from Florida, it was really nice to get back into some sunny and 75 degree weather. I definitely ate too much turkey, uh, but I especially enjoyed some pumpkin cheesecake. How about yourself? I had a great Thanksgiving, Davis. I live only an hour away from Evanston, so I didn't get away from the cold, but I did get to enjoy my mom's amazing mashed potatoes and my mom's famous apple pie. It was delicious. That sounds excellent, but to me, there's nothing better on Thanksgiving than watching some football. Uh, speaking of which, we have some NU football to catch you guys up on. Two weeks ago, the Cats took on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, ranked 10th in the college football playoff poll at Ryan Field. This past weekend, the, uh, they traveled to Champaign, Champaign to take on the Illinois Fighting Illini. Let's see how they did. Northwestern hosting Minnesota as the Cats look to win their first Big Ten, Big Ten game of the year. To start off here, uh, Minnesota's Tanner Morgan drops back to pass. Now looks down the sideline and finds Rashad Bateman for the touchdown. Minnesota takes an early 7-0 lead. Then... Minnesota has the ball getting up 21 nothing, but look, Joe Gaziano comes in for the sack, misses, forcing Tanner Morgan, Morgan to throw the ball away, but the rest would rule that intentional grounding, giving Joe Gaziano his record-breaking sack and Northwestern's first points of the game, making it 21-2 Northwestern in the second quarter. Later, now, uh, Northwestern would capitalize on that, that two-point play with a nice catch by Jace James, a little one-handed action there as Northwestern would go up 21-9 going into halftime, but Minnesota would then respond with a nice jump ball to find uh, Tyler Johnson, and Minnesota would win 38-22, and Northwestern would remain winless in Big Ten play. It's rivalry week, and Northwestern is taking on the University of Illinois for the Land of Lincoln Trophy down in Champaign. This is a 33-yard attempt by Charlie Kubander for the, for the Wildcats to go up by three in the first quarter. They're able to do it, he knocks it through. But Illinois coming back in the second quarter, they're in the red zone. Dre Brown into the end zone, they're gonna score, they go up 7-3. But wait, the Wildcats, on a drive of their own, they get into the, into the red zone, and Andrew Marty, he's gonna take it in, himself on the read option. The Wildcats take the lead up 10-7. And now, Andrew Marty drops back into the pocket. He looks over the middle, and he finds Riley Lees for the touchdown to put the Wildcats up 17-7 in the third quarter. Illinois trying for a field goal here from 50 yards away off the goal post, and it goes in. They're, they're only down 17-10 now. Andrew Marty in for the QB sneak, and Northwestern is going to score putting themselves up 24 to 10 and to ice the game. It's Coco Azima, a 24 yard score on fourth and eight to ice it for the Wildcats. They win this one in Champaign. Program. I'll start with our seniors. You know, you think about their body of work um, since they arrived in 2015. 39 wins, five straight against the against our rival here. Uh, three bowl championships, a Big Ten West title, team records and GPA, academic All Big Ten, All Big Ten performances, and, and distinguished scholars. Uh, their body of work speaks for itself. Okay. Really proud of those guys, and really proud of the young guys that have stepped up over the last, I don't know, eight, nine, ten weeks. Um, 
because of the adversity that we faced. So we haven't made excuses. We've just kept working. And, uh, you know, to, to finish off with an exclamation point the way we did today, uh, to keep the land of Lincoln and Evanston for five straight years uh, is a great springboard for the future. And we couldn't be more excited about it. And so it's the holidays are just around the corner, Davis. And we the here at Sports Night wanted to make our own NU Sports wish list for the upcoming year. So I'm going to ask you, what's your first thing for our wish list, Davis? Uh, well, obviously, the elephant in the room in Northwestern athletics is the firing of longtime offensive coordinator Mick McCall. And as a result, I really want Northwestern to go out and hire an innovative offensive coordinator to sort of revamp this offense. Obviously, Mick McCall has been at Northwestern for a very long time. But the offense sort of bottomed out this year in a really bad way, ranking dead last in most offensive categories, to be honest. And they really just need to go out and hire somebody who's going to revamp the offense and really make it more exciting to watch, just a more exciting brand of football. I really strongly recommend Matt Canada, who really uses pre-snap motion to sort of get, t get teams moving, get teams uncomfortable. Uh, so I just really think Northwestern really needs to revamp this offense in a big way, and they really should make a big splash hire in the offensive coordinator position. I think I completely agree with you, Davis. And for me, I want to turn it to men's basketball. And I want the young core of this team to shine in this upcoming season. I want Miller Cop and I want Boo Booey to take big roles that they, that they had in the Boston College game earlier. I want to see them uh, start to step into a leadership role because they're eventually going to have to do that for this team as the seniors and the juniors uh, leave. And I think that when this Big Ten schedule comes up, they're going to have their opportunity to do just that. And I agree with you, but with a young team comes great inconsistency, and we've seen that already uh, with Northwestern losing games to Merrimack and Radford. So based on that, I really want Northwestern, towards the end of this non-conference schedule, to beat the remaining mid-majors on their schedule. They have a game against Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, and they also have a game against Hartford coming up as well. Uh, they have a game against DePaul, who's also considered mid-major, but I really consider that to be a really tough game since they're, pre they're having a really good year so far. Uh, but they really need to beat Hartford and Southern Illinois University Edwardsville uh, to really get some momentum going into Big Ten play. I mean, these are teams that they should beat on a consistent basis, and they haven't really done that this year so far. So in order to get some momentum going to Big Ten play, a brutal stretch of games, uh, they really need to get those wins to get more comfortable in, in, with their team. I completely agree with you, Davis. I think all that is spot on. But I want to turn it to the women's side of the hardwood, and I want to look at this NU women's basketball team and that they just need more attention put on them. This is a great team. They are 6-1 and one right now, with their only loss coming to the 17th ranked DePaul, who has had a great season, and that's our only loss. I think that this team between Lindsey Polium, Veronica Burton, Abby Wolf, there's a lot of talent on this team, and I think that we just don't have enough attendance at Welsh Ryan, unfortunately that they should be having because this is an incredibly fun team to watch and I think they're going to go far in the Big Ten this year and so come out and watch the Wildcats is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I agree when we do these highlight videos you see a lot of empty empty seats in Welsh Ryan Arena unfortunately when the women's basketball team plays you're missing some good basketball uh, but don't come back because when we come back we're going to talk some NU hoops that happened over Thanksgiving break. At Northwestern we're Wildcats in every way. and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless.
Welcome back to Sports Night. You know, it's getting pretty cold in Evanston these days. That means it must be basketball season. That's right, Davis. And the men's, took a trip, the men's team took a trip down to Florida for the Fort Myers tip-off, where they faced against uh, Bradley and the University of Pittsburgh. Roll the tape. The Northwestern Wildcats took on the Bradley Braves in the Fort Myers Invitational, and this one starts with Pat Spencer driving towards the hoop. He puts up the floater, and it's good for two points there. And now Pete Nance on the wing. He makes a move inside, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar-like gets that sky hook to go. This is Ryan Young in the paint. Pump fake, and up and in for the two points in the paint. The Bradley Braves, though, are looking for a comeback of their own as they get the and one to go. But Pete Nance says, I'm not going to let you come back because here's a three ball for you. The Northwestern Wildcats win this one 78 to 51 in Fort Myers. And coming off the opening game win against Bradley, Northwestern looked to win their third straight as they faced off against the Pittsburgh Panthers in their second game in Fort Myers. Earlier in the first half, tied four apiece. But Pete Nance tips it off to Pat Spencer, who takes it all the way himself, coast to coast. Nice little layup off the glass to give Northwestern an early 6-4 lead in the first half. Later, Pat Spencer, again, running the point. Serving the court, now kicks out the Boo Booey. Corner three, that is buckets. 36-32, though, Pittsburgh in the second half. Later, Pat Spencer again, surveying the court. Pump fix to a pass, but splashes a rainbow three to cut the lead, but Pittsburgh would be up 50-43. But in the end, Pat Spencer's efforts would not be enough as Pitt would win 72-59, win the Fort Myers Invitational. And then, the Northwestern Wildcats are taking on Boston College in Chestnut Hill. They look to get it started here. Here comes Anthony Gaines down the court. He dishes it to Miller Kopp. Bang, there goes the three for Miller Kopp. The Wildcats are up here 22-20 in the first quarter. Pat Spencer dishes it out to, to Miller Kopp again, and he's great from three yet again. But how about Boo Booey? You couldn't forget a guy with that type of name. He puts, the, he puts the floater up and it's good to go. Here's Boo Booey again, nearly two feet behind the line, splash. Another three for the New York, for the, for the kid from New York. And this time it goes in and it, he takes it in for the slam. Wildcats win this one, 82-64. That wraps up all the men's basketball action from the past two weeks. They play next Sunday against Purdue and West Lafayette. Our own Andrew Fenichel has a stat of the week relating to the men's basketball team. So check it out. I was down in Florida last week covering the Fort Myers tip-off. And the story of the tournament, it wasn't the champion Pittsburgh Panthers. No, it was Northwestern point guard Pat Spencer, who was pretty clearly the best player in a tournament filled with NBA prospects like Xavier Sneed, Cartier Jada, and Daryl Brown. So my stat of the week. So number three, since Basketball Reference began tracking college basketball data for their play index in 1992, only three freshmen in the history of the Big Ten have averaged 14 points, four rebounds, and four assists per game. You got Tony Carr, he did it for Penn State in 2016, Jaquan Lyle did it for Ohio State in 2015, and NBA All-Star D'Angelo Russell also did it for Ohio State one season earlier in 2014. This season, Pat Spencer is on track to join that club. But I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Pat Spencer isn't a freshman. He's a senior. This stat is useless. Get this guy off my TV. But let me tell you something. Pat Spencer isn't just a normal senior. No, no, no. Pat Spencer is one of the greatest lacrosse players in the history of the NCAA. And he hasn't played competitive basketball since high school. I mentioned D'Angelo Russell. So check this out. 2014, D'Angelo Russell was coming off a high-profile high school basketball career at Prep Powerhouse Montverb, and he just spent a summer balling out in the AAU circuit. Last year, Pat Spencer was balling out during Friday night pickup games at the community gym at Loyola, Maryland. So really, what Spencer is doing this year is more impressive than if he was just a random freshman. And I want you to try to contextualize this for a minute. 14-4-4, four and four, playing for a Power 6 team, and the scary part? He's only getting better. Imagine if you got thrown into a random job that you haven't done in five years. Like, think about it this way. Let's say you were a journalist, and all of a sudden your employer's like, you know what, forget writing an article. I want you to go back and code an app. You think you'd survive, much less absolutely thrive like Pat Spencer's doing? Probably not. The moral of the story, Pat Spencer's pretty good at basketball. Davis and Matthew, 
Back to you guys. Thank you, Andrew, for that great insight on Spencer's season so far. Moving to the women's side of the hardwood, the Cats had two games in Welsh Ryan. Let's see how they turned out. The Northwestern women's basketball team taking on Colgate Raiders at Welsh Ryan Arena. Abby Scheid drives down lane and makes the layup. Northwestern off to a hot 9-0 start. Later, Courtney Shaw for uh, Rachel Thompson for Colgate breaks the Northwestern press and has an easy layup. And then later, uh, Lindsey Pulliam drives in the lane and hits a nice and one. And then Rachel Thompson has a nice layup after the Haley Greer steal breaks the press and Colgate makes it 33-18. Then later, Abby Wolf hits the layup to end the half. Northwestern up 44-24 comfortably. And then Sydney Wood lays in after the Lauren Satterwhite steal. Northwestern are going to dominate the Colgate Raiders 73-44. And moving to the game against number 17th ranked DePaul, it goes down low to Abby Wolf and she puts it up for the layup. It's good. This time Veronica Burton is going to dish it down to Abby Wolf, and again, she's good from the paint. This time, a sweep behind the back dribble move. She takes it in, yeah. and the floater is good. This time it's Burton to Galernick, down to Pulliam, and she gets the jumper to go. Cats are down by one here in the third quarter. Abby Wolf. Fighting down low for that pass. It doesn't go, but it's okay because Polium is there. And this time it's in again to Polium, and she gets that layup to go. Out to Veronica Burton for three. Splash! That's behind the men's three point line. They win, the DePaul wins 70 to 68. Northwestern also played a home game versus Boston College last night, pulling out a close 66 to 63 victory. The Cats are back in action this Saturday in Welsh Ryan Arena versus Dartmouth. So I'd like to welcome our analysts here to talk about women's basketball. So although the Wildcats fell to DePaul this past Sunday, they were going undefeated into that game and they defeated Boston College last night. So what I want to ask is, where does this team fit in with the elite of the Big Ten this early in the season? You know, the Cats are off to a really strong start, as you said. They won their first five games of the season. Really impressive non-conference play. Um, and then they went on to play DePaul, which is a little bit tougher of a matchup for them. They had that momentum going into that game, but DePaul's a great team, one of the top teams in the country year after year, really tough for the Cats. So they unfortunately weren't able to come out with a win then, but that I think that matchup really showed that Northwestern can compete with some of these top Big Ten teams. The Big Ten is one of the best conferences in women's basketball this year. They are actually having their strongest start record-wise in over a decade, so really impressive from them. Maryland and Indiana have both proven to be the best of the best. Michigan, Michigan State not far behind, but I think once the Cats are given that opportunity to compete, they'll show that they're right up with them. And with all that tough competition, it can be hard for the young talent to get out on the floor, I'm sure, and show that. So what is your assessment of this young talent, including Veronica Burton and Sydney Wood? I mean, Northwestern comes with this really, really strong young guard unit. That's what they're known for re as of late. And Sydney Wood and Veronica Burton are probably the two most important people in of those younger players. Uh, they're two of the best defenders on one of the top defenses in the country. Veronica Burton is leading the team with uh, four uh, four steals a game, which is really impressive. And Sydney Wood is actually the second leading rebounder on the team as a point guard, which is another just crazy thing to see from such a young player. And they both have incredible incredible heart, incredible hustle, and have really shown that there's a lot of potential for the future of this program. And finally, I want to ask you what your outlook is for the rest of this team here as, as the season goes on, and maybe what's one thing that the team could work on to really put themselves in that elite tier of women's basketball? You know, with that Boston College game last night, it's kind of hard for us to forget that rebounding was a really big issue. Northwestern was out-rebounded by over 20 rebounds and allowed um, Boston College to pull down 21 offensive boards, which is just, you know, not what the Cats have really been trying to do as of late. And, you know, I think this team knew that there was going to be a challenge this year. They graduated their best post player last year, Palos Kanayakpana, so they had to really fill that void. But I think they've stepped up and done it so far, so I'd like to see how they can continue to do that or improve upon that as they are playing some tougher big 
10 uh, post players throughout the rest of the season. And additionally, they um, have really struggled with injuries this year. Jordan Hamilton has been one of, is one of the best players on the team. She was the starting point guard last season, and she's been out the whole year with an injury. Same with uh, Jess Sancataldo, one of the best shooters on the team, also has not played this year. So I know they'd really love to get them back, and if they can do that and solve some of the smaller issues, I think they're going to be a top team in the Big Ten and really thrive in conference play and in postseason. Well, I think that's a great assessment of this team so far, and I, I want to thank you for your time, and, uh, and it was a great assessment of the team. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. We have some volleyball and wrestling action to cover coming up after this break. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless. Welcome back to Sports Night. Davis, with the holidays coming around the corner, what's on your wish list? Uh, that's a good question, Matthew. You know, I could really use some more winter gear. I'm tired of really wearing the same heavy jacket everywhere I go. However, I don't need any winter clothes to watch the volleyball. The NU women's volleyball team wrapped up their season this past week by playing Illinois twice in four days. Winning their previous two games, the Cats look to finish strong. Roll the tapes. The Northwestern women's volleyball team takes on the Illinois Fighting Illini at Huff Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Wildcats lose the first set to Illini here on a great block by Atlanta Walker in the second set to make the score 12-16 Illini. However, Northwestern would fall in the third set as there's a long rally here, but then keeps going, keeps going, and then nice play there as Northwestern would win the third set 24-23. Later in the fourth set, Illinois looking to win the match as Northwestern is blocked at the line by the Illinois fighting line and they would take this game three to one. And now we come to the game that's in Welsh Ryan where they're playing the Illini, the 24th ranked. And this rally is going here and it's gonna go up Saved by Nia Robinson, it's going to be set up for Alana Walker to put down, and she's able to. That touches the floor. A point for the Wildcats. We're in the fourth set. Later on in this fourth set, Sarah Johnson sets up Alana Walker, but it's saved by the Illini. They try to put it up, saved again, and this one goes into the net. The Wildcats win 3-1. to one. And now I'm joined by volleyball. Uh, he covers volleyball for the Daily, uh, Carlos Stinson Moss. How are you doing today? I see you're rocking the Santa outfit. How would you come up with that? I uh, found it at Goodwill and uh, just decided to wear it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's talk some volleyball now that the season's over. Uh, at one point, the Northwestern team started a Big Ten play, losing 10 straight games. 
Uh, they won four of their last six, including a win over number 17 Illinois to finish this 2019 season with a 14-18 record. Uh, what changed the team that allowed them to close so strong to the season? Yeah, a few issues uh, early on in those first 10 games. Uh, they played six ranked teams uh, in those first 10, uh, so that was really difficult. Um, and then they had some injuries, Ella Gerback, Danielle Williams, uh, and then later on, Temi thomas Alara uh, were some pretty serious injuries for the team. Uh, and then later on, they kind of figured it out. They got some players back. Um, and they were really able to win some games down the stretch and build up momentum. Um, and that last win uh, against Illinois was their first win this season against a ranked opponent. So it really came together quite nicely by the end of the year. Okay, and now that the season is over, how would you assess this team's season and performance? What was the biggest surprise as well as maybe a disappointment? Yeah, okay. uh, I think Temi thomas Alara was a big surprise. Uh, she is a big freshman for the team. She ended up making the all-freshman uh, Big Ten squad and was second team all Big Ten overall. Uh, so she had a great year for them and should uh, be a good player for years to come. Uh, they had one really disappointing loss to Rutgers. Uh, it was only Rutgers' second win against a Big Ten opponent in their history, uh, so that was a pretty tough loss. But overall, I think they had, had a lot of positive surprises and things to build on over time. And looking ahead to next year, what should be a reasonable ex expectation for fans on what the goal should be for Northwestern next year? Should it be NCAA tournament berth, or should it just be a winning record, or what really should be a realistic goal for next year's team moving forward? Yeah, the team has been without a winning record for a few years now, but they do have a lot of good returning players coming back, so uh, they should have a really good opportunity to get a winning record next year. Um, the tournament is going to be really tough considering uh, how difficult Big Ten play is, but a winning record certainly isn't out of reach for next year. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to watching some more Northwestern Volleyball next year, and I look forward to seeing what the team is going to build on. Don't turn your backs on the Northwestern wrestling team because they will take you down. They are the number 16th ranked team in the country, and two Sundays ago, they took on North Dakota State at Welsh Ryan Arena to try and extend their win streak. The number three ranked Wildcat at 125 pounds, Sebastian Rivera, took on the eighth ranked wrestler in his weight, class. Rivera would go the distance with his opponent, winning in a decision 7-3. Not to be outdone, however, also ranked at number three in his weight class of 157 pounds, Ryan Deacon defeated his opponent from North Dakota State in spectacular fashion. Deacon won in a major decision 12-1. Other standout Wildcats included Yaya Thomas, Tyler Moreland, Jack Jessen, and Lucas Davison, who won all their contests against North, their North Dakota State counterparts. These efforts helped the Cats cruise to a 28-18 win. The Cats will get back on the mat tomorrow in the Cliff Clean Invitational. When we come back, we're showing the best of Northwestern sports. It's Plays of the Week. Don't go anywhere. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless.
welcome back to Sports Night. I don't know about you, Matthew, but that was just a lot of highlights we just went through. It's safe to say Northwestern sports didn't stop while we were on a break. You're 100% right, Davis. And what better way to encapsulate all those games and sweet highlights than with plays of the week? Roll on. First play up, Pete Nance passes it out to Boo Booey, who drives all the way down in a difficult floater layup, goes in with the contact against Pitt. At number two, it's Abby Sheed to Lindsey Pulliam for the bucket inside. Great passing by the Wildcats. And the play of the week, Northwestern's first Big Ten win of the season in football goes to Andrew Marty here with the keeper against the Illinois Fighting Line and defense splits defenders. And he has a day with the end zone, ladies and gentlemen. Dives in to give Northwestern their lead, and they would go on to win this game. Check out another look at here. Andrew Marty sees, sees some opening lane and finds pay dirt. Well, it's been a great show, Davis, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have. It's been an eventful fall, fall quarter for NU Sports, but there's still plenty to look forward to as the calendar turns to 2020. I, for one, am excited. As am I. That's going to wrap up Sports Night for 2019. For Davis Johnson, I'm Matthew Coronado. Have a great night and happy holidays.